one of my subscribers has asked how you set up the modes in the multi-wii so in the configuration on a multi-wii you can set up things like auto level acro mode gps hold gps home you can set um, barometer which is where it will try and keep the same um, position in the sky there are lots of other things you can do and rather than try and explain that in words, I thought it would be useful to put a little video together that showed how that happens. So there are three things I'm going to go through in this video. The first is uh, we're going to talk about the transmitter. You need to find a three position switch, ideally, and a spare channel on the receiver. And once you've got those bits and pieces sorted out, you can plug that into the multi-wii. Second thing we're going to talk around is how that connection actually works, where you plug it into the receiver and then where you plug it into the multi-wii itself. And finally then we'll have a look at the multi-wii interface on the PC, talk about how you find out more information about what all these modes do and how you configure it so that when you flick the switch on the transmitter, the multi-wii changes the mode. So first of all, let's talk about the transmitter and how you find that three position switch. For this we're going to be using a six channel receiver with a DX7. Now normally to fly a quadcopter you only need four channels. You need the throttle, elevator, rudder and aileron to control the three attitudes of the model and the power going to the ESCs and motors. The other channels that you have here are then on the Spectrum kit called Gear and Auxiliary 1. So the first thing we're going to do is turn on the radio and find out which is which. Now, gear on Spectrum Kit is actually called gear, and it's a two-position switch. So with that, we could only select one of two flight modes on the multi-wii, which isn't great. The better one is actually this switch on the shoulder that has three positions. And what we'll do is we'll very quickly check that that does give us three positions by looking at the monitor menu. So if I turn on the DX7, what we'll do is we'll just zoom in on the display and I'll actually show you the three positions on the radio. So here we are, we'll go into the menus and we'll find the monitor. There it is. And you can see on the what's called the pit channel, which is actually auxiliary one, as I move the switch, it by default goes from low to mid to high position. And also with the gear channel, as I move that, you'll see it goes from low to high, low to high. So for me, the one that will give me the most flight modes on the receiver will be the AUX1 connection. So on the receiver, we have battery bind, throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, gear, which is that two position switch, which would only give us two flight modes. And the one we're going to use, the AUX1 channel here, which has that three position switch, which will give us the three flight modes. Now this is the one that you connect here. So um, normally what you'd use, is you'd use one of these special little cables that you get with a kit. We'll plug the uh, connection into the receiver and this little pin as you can see on this diagram, goes into the second to bottom pin on the multi-wii. And this is the AUX1 connection on the multi-wii. It just happens to be called AUX1, um, so we could be plugging the gear channel into this or whatever. But once we've done that, then we have all the physical connections made. We can actually jump into the multi-wii conf program and set up our flight modes. So here we are in the Multi-Wii Conf program, version 2.2, connected to the board. We've got all the bits and pieces running here, and hopefully you can see here, there's the AUX1 channel that's on the three position switch. So as I move the three positions on the radio, you'll see those three positions change from mid to low to mid to high. Now, each of those switch positions over here in this part of the display have a, a corresponding row of bits and pieces. Now, don't worry about what these are. We'll talk about the arm angle and everything in a second. For the moment, just look at the low, mid, and high. So when the switch is in the low position, anything that is selected, okay, will uh, be activated. Mid position, anything that's in this row, this column, will be activated, and similarly with high. So, for example, if I put it into the mid position, you'll see that um, because angle is highlighted, 
the angle mode is now active. If I put it into the high position for the AUX1 channel, you'll see that both angle and the barometer are turned on as well. Now, the reason, which you probably saw, when it's in the low position, I tried, I actually clicked on a couple of these boxes and they didn't turn green. The reason is that I haven't written those settings back to the board, so those settings are only stored here locally on the PC, not directly on the MultiWii. And whenever you change anything in this interface, you should always click write, and once you've written it, click read to read it back to make sure it all makes sense. Now, all of these different things that you can turn on and off, and this isn't a complete list because we don't have a GPS on this board, is available at multiwee.com slash wiki slash index dot php question mark title equals flight mode. It's on the screen at the moment. I'll put the link in the description under the video as well. Very briefly, arm, obviously that is when the board is armed. You can actually set that to be done by a switch as well. I don't, so let me just, there we are, it's armed, and I'll turn, I'll unarm it with a controller. Angle is the self-level mode. Horizon is a special mode in the multi-wii where in the center of the sticks it kind of acts like it's self-level and the more extreme positions of the sticks it acts like it's in acro mode so it gives you in theory the best of both worlds barometer barometer is uh, where it will try and stay at a specific height in the air realistically it'll probably wander anywhere between six to twenty feet depending on um, how sensitive the barometer is and you can see that gray wavy line at the bottom it's not fantastic uh, magnetometer what that does is it uses the essentially a compass that's on board the system to lock the direction when you take your hand off the rudder head free and head adjust they're two slightly wackier modes. Head free means that no matter what orientation the craft is in, it always behaves as though its uh, bottom is facing towards you. I would say if you're learning to fly, don't use these. Just um, get to grips with nose in. You'll be a better pilot faster. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you want to change any of the settings, you decide what you want on and off for each of the modes. Once you've done that, you click on right. And then next time you move the switch on the transmitter, you will have those modes turning on and off. Thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe and happy flying.